was that sweet oh, angelic that was actually voice. like pretty good. You mean your 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 one note song? That was. Yeah, my one note song. <laughs> I was impressed with that. I like that. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, you're welcome. Episode you three fifty. Three fifty. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like that it's seems really like good. something we should be excited about. Yeah, I think so too. It's <laughs> okay. like ha- yeah. I'm. T- I tell you, everything after like three hundred is what I call law and order numbers. Because yes. Because it's like only a TV show that has been on for so long. By the way, there's this yeah. guy that follows me. I think he's from that show. Let me look him up. His name <gasps> oh is my Michael God. Kelly. I'm gonna need to know. I'm gonna need to know. This. Look him Listen, up, Michael I Kelly. Need- what is he single? Is he, is he cute? No, 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 he's I need old. to know all these. Oh, <laughs> I don't care about this then. Why are you telling me? Why are you wasting my time? No, I'm because kidding. it's your favorite show. I know. Okay, you're right. You're right. My mind's in Wait. one place today. I don't know what the deal Let, is. It's just like okay, the opposite of what I was saying actor. last week. He's an actor. Michael what Kelly. F- let's find out. Let's do this right now. Googling it. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, I he love was on, him. No, he's on House of Cards. Okay. Oh, but he's so good on there. He was yeah. also, isn't he in, is he in Scandal? No, maybe. He just what seems shows? like that kind of guy that's oh just my gosh. on that no, type yeah, of show. He's, in, he's so good in House of Cards. He like creeps <laughs> me out, but I'm also slightly attracted to him. Oh, no, he's cute. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's real cute. I mean, too old for me, but... Not too old for me. <laughs> not too old to look at. Yes. <laughs> he's like right like, in my age range. I just decided nobody is too old for me. Yeah, there you go. And you know what? They love it. They they love all the attention. And that's what I love is they will worship me. Oh, yeah. And I love asking questions and they have so much more life experience Mm -hmm. and so i think it's a great match for when adam dies or leaves me (laughs) you know what's so funny is like every i've been i've been uh uh first of all good you'll be have company all your life and second of all the thing that's been getting me uh uh through the the kind of like you know tougher yes. times and like yes. lonely nights has been friends the show friends Ugh, and right? now i've watched so many episodes that every single thing somebody says my first instinct goes is oh that reminds me of this one time on friends and i like had to try five times in that conver- in that sentence you just said to not do that honestly that show it's unbelievable how much it has infiltrated the the ongoings of my life i it's mean so it really comforting. is therapy Mm-hmm. And I laugh so hard. You LOL. LOL. I'm absolutely dying. I'm like, so shout out, because I was just laughing to myself this morning when I was like going to put up an Instagram, a little swipe up about, you know, shout out to like my friends, because we talked about that a couple episodes ago. And I was like, oh my God, you know what's getting me through this? Friends and friends. Mm-hmm. And I just had a little giggle. So Honestly, it's true. And... That is why I'm obsessed with old shows like Cheers and stuff because yeah. when you are going through crap, then you need comfort. Yeah, and why do those old shows do it more than – are there new ones that do it? No, they don't really. Maybe Probably it's because it like reminds – yeah, maybe. May, and maybe because it's also nostalgic for us. Yeah, definitely. That's got to be it. I'm glad that they're, you're finding solace in that though. Yeah, you know. Just love – I love – come on. When they're moving the couch – Pivot! Pivot! <laughs> that, I was Why dying. is that so funny? I, be, I don't it know. Is, and because everybody's been there and everybody has that friend that, that moves like that. <laughs> where they're so like, true. here's how we're going to do it. This chart, <laughs> this chart, we're going to go and here's the angle. And then it never works. And then they're like trying to be like the, the site manager and like the, the, or whoever's the, you know. Would you say you are mm-hmm. that friend? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's probably why I laugh so hard about it. Right, right, right. I laugh so hard because I'm like, oh, thank you. That's me. Yep. I that feels that. Yep. I recognize that. But it's not an insult. Like everyone needs someone like that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But then and we have to just laugh at it. And then you, everybody <laughs> needs the friend who's going to be like, this doesn't freaking matter. Like. Right, you know that was how well, my friend Cameron, who helped me move, what he was like, and he's oh he was God. like dying laughing. Both of us could not even get my mattress up the stairs, and it's because <laughs> it's a Tempur Pedic, so it's really floppy. Oh, no. It's like not, and to move it, yeah, it's not even heavy. It's just like it's like carrying a toddler that's like fallen asleep or like doesn't <laughs> want to be picked up and is like moving in every direction but the one you want it to go, and it's just like f- super floppy. Oh my God, laugh a minute. We just couldn't even pick it up because we were laughing so hard. I can't believe you didn't hire movers. Did you? Well, I did. I hired movers for 
you know, the majority of the stuff. But my uh, my bed, I wanted to get in there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ASAP. So I just, you know. Well, with regards it, to friends, though, I think we talked about on the show how my favorite friend always changes depending on where I am in my life yeah. and stuff. Do you have a favorite friend right now, like, from the show? Oh, my Not- gosh. That's so funny. Yeah, Joey. He's cracking you up. Yeah, and it almost like it's not even that he's cracking me up. It's the endearing Joey that I'm loving. Oh, yeah, he's very sweet. Right? Is yeah. It's just like it's, I, yeah, so it's real funny. I feel like I could do an entire episode of just on friends. Oh, well, you know, when I, I interviewed the author of that book um, about the which, show which Friends. Which I'm going to have to read now. I think it's called I'll Be There For You. That was such yeah. a great book. Like, if you are a Friends fanatic, you will love that book. Oh, Gosh, I have a right. copy. I'll give it to you. Yeah. So when you were interviewing them, no, I'm just saying like we did. The, you know, that was half oh, of an yes. episode, and it, yeah. you really could. Yes, you could do an entire yes. podcast about for that. sure. You could. My friend did one. It was called Best of Friends. Oh my gosh! And even yeah. the names are also great. Yeah. Yeah. There are a never, lot of my thoughts. We'll have never have a show really. like that ever again. No, they won't. Right. No. The times have changed. They were sort of the last of that generation of sitcom. Yeah, R. and R. like P. P, that used to be destination watching. Everyone would watch <sighs> it every yeah. week, and that just doesn't happen anymore. I think that's probably a part of it. This whole Netflix like binge watch kind of mm-hmm. you know on demand thing. It doesn't make us fall in love with the show the same way because there's no delay of gratification. Yeah. Yes, I agree. But I pr- I love binging. Oh, me too. Don't get me wrong. But it creates a different feeling towards the show. Yeah. Have you seen anything recently that? Mm. Um, well, just comedians in cars getting coffee. Oh, yeah, but I feel like some of the ones recently have been like, meh. Totally. I felt like that. that. So is that Jerry or is that them? Because at a certain point you have to go, okay, this many in a row. I don't know. Maybe people are worried about saying something inappropriate. Oh, maybe. That kind of thing. I don't know. You might be right. Maybe Jerry's getting lazy. And Jerry can sometimes bait him a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. So huh. that could be it. Or maybe it's just we are crabbier. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, and I can't believe I remembered her name. Oh, gosh, I'm clearly in the zone right now. But how about that new one with Christina Applegate? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, don't you tell have me. to watch it. I will. It's really good. I, I don't know. I heard everybody like buzzing about it. Yeah, I did too. And, and I was like, oh, come, what's the big deal? And then I watched it and they so beautifully discussed grief yeah. In a way that I think I maybe even talked about this already on here, but it's great and everybody should watch. There you go. <laughs> End of rant. Another thing everybody should do is drink some liquid IV and stay hydrated. Ooh, I've been on a water kick. That's like my new little goal. I'm, oh, Suze, tell yes. the people. Well, tell the people. Remember when we were in Nashville and Adam was down to one packet? Of I know, and IV. I, the whole time I wanted to ask him, but I didn't. And I, was like, <laughs> I relied on him to bring them because I thought he was yes. going to bring a bunch, and then he didn't, and that's why I didn't bring any. And then I was like, why did I do that, Sarah? Oh. Yeah. He had Always to ration those babies. Want. Yeah. Yeah, and that one morning I woke up and I was like, I'm hungover. I should have a liquid IV. And then I knew that we were rationing them, so I didn't. But yeah. if you want to stay hydrated and t- have something tasty, liquid IV is so convenient. It's this pouch you carry around with... Um, this powder in it, add it to your water or your water bottle, and it'll hydrate you two to three times faster. As I said, it's great for um, a hangover or if you're jet lagged and traveling or if your kid has soccer practice or whatever. It's so great. Just keep them in the car and uh, it can help your workout and prevent muscle, muscle fatigue. And I mean, it, and it's tasty. They have all different yeah, flavors too. Tasty. And it's not sugary like a lot of those drinks. We love Liquid IV, and we know you will too. Right now, our listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code CANDY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter our code CANDY to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com promo code CANDY. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. That's a new code too, so make sure you make note of that. Yeah, I need to make note of that too. So that's how you got to stock up, or you could just steal yeah. them when you're here. And yeah, I'll never. Yeah. Be I did the take wiser. a couple when I was uh, house sitting. <laughs> did you? Oh, I stole you a box of macaroni and cheese. Anyways, <laughs> I know I'll be keeping a list, an itemized list of all these things. <laughs> Have you seen, by the way, that viral video? I never know whether you see viral things because you're not sometimes c- consistent. But that guy that like he's an artist. 
But he's popping balloons with knives and stuff. No, I have not okay. seen this. <laughs> it's the weirdest video of this dude, and it's a compilation, so it's just quick mm-hmm. cuts of all different ways that he's fashioned like wood and knives to fall on top of balloons, mm-hmm. and they pop, and it's sort of satisfying. But when you oh, watch I the whole this. compilation, they're saying it's almost like visual ASMR. Uh-huh. There's something about it that is really compelling. And I was, after this, you'll have to watch it and I'll ask what uh, you, you think. Know, okay. Okay. You know what I can even, in my mind, uh, uh, guess is a little bit of why we like it. And I have mm. no research to back this up, but this is my instinct. <laughs> no, nothing. Um, but it's the anticipation of something and then the relief of it happening. Yes. I that think makes that feels sense. good to people. It could you imagine? It's like, it's almost like if you were to see, like, like oh, you know those dominoes that fall when people set them all up yes. and they're real cool and they're like right at the end. So if you yes. were to see like night, like seventy five percent better, even like ninety nine percent of that, and it was right about to get to the finale, and then you cut it off, oh, that feeling would suck. Yeah. You'd be like. What? But then when it gets to the end, it's almost like when, why we laugh at it, like the anatomy of a joke Mm -hmm. about how there's the reason why we laugh at it is because we've created this whole expectation of what's going to happen at the end. And then the the comedian surprises us. Yes. And it's in a way. The relief. The Yeah. The -hmm. surprise and it being different is like what makes us chuckle. But us knowing what the end is going to be is comforting and why we get into it. Yeah. That's just my theory though. And I read an interview with him in which he said that he had always done a lot of stuff with weapons and sort of dark and darkness and death and really aggressive themes. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as he chose to add balloons, people really turned around and responded well to it. And I wanted to get your opinion about the psychology of humans where the whimsy of the balloons made it more appealing. Or maybe it was like the dichotomy of this aggressive weapon combined with something we associate with childhood or something. What are your thoughts? Well, I just think there must be something in the human brain where we can only handle so much darkness before we need some levity. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like Gallows laughter. Yeah. In a way. Even like when you're at a funeral and you have the giggles. Well, I can't say that's ever happened to me, but I no, can imagine. No, me neither, but people talk about it where it's like yeah. almost this weird thing where okay, they Okay, I can imagine that. Yeah. Well, yeah. as somebody who cries when they get uncomfortable, or not cries, laughs, yeah. when I, when I, in awkward moments, when yeah. I should even be crying or not be totally serious, I, I'm a giggler. Yes. Oh, totally. I would, I just don't attend, an, uh, God, I hope I don't want to attend anymore. I mean, I don't want to attend anymore, but I just don't attend <laughs> enough funerals for that for me to have a. a but I, I bet I would be sample. the giggler. Maybe. Oh man, I think yeah, I think you're right. We do have to add a little. It's like something the brain wants to do. So yeah, yeah, huh, like it's too heavy, and so we almost insert um, levity or joyfulness, and maybe oh. that's what made it appealing. I don't know. I'm just or guessing. like the opposite. What. Even like taking something that's childish and then make like and playful and then making it darker. Yeah, like Halloween does that. Like the reverse. Yeah, or you know, even, yeah. You know, where it's supposed to be just like clowns and like trick or treating, and then we're like, <laughs> here's or Jason t- from whatever. Right, or anytime they, they, um, like I even think of like adult cartoons. You know, mm. you know what I mean? There's something yes. that we like more about it because we're seeing it from a talking dog or like an alien or, you know. Yeah, there's like, like an incongruity there where yeah, this is a format known for being for children, but we are putting right. adult themes onto it. Uh-huh. Yes. And like the reverse of what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. We'll never know. Interesting. Yeah, what is this artist like? Did you see a picture of him? Or no, I just read an uh, uh, an interview that he did. Like, I'd be a Q&A. interested to see what he what. Well, he... he's in the video. You can see him in the video. Oh, okay, he's is, just he like the, a normal... is he the kind of guy who would wear a trench coat back in the day? <laughs> For sure. Okay, this is. I totally have an image of who this is in my mind. <laughs> and I think he oh, might. I can't remember yeah. if he's Swedish. Or that also uh, makes something. sense. <laughs> yeah, I have that in my mind too. Yeah, we might want to check his browser history. <laughs> 
<laughs> what do you think we might find? I don't know. Right. Question but, mark. Question mark. I just, my little, you know, feelers, my, my <laughs> just kind of a little bit go up for that one. After it what we, t- but maybe, maybe it's just because what we talked about. I don't know. I have nothing to base that off of. He's it probably is great weird guy. though how, I don't know, just what goes viral and what doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I it's guess just it's serendipity. But there is there is something satisfying about those kind of videos. And then when it's something like, and things are like there are also themes that tend to come up too. You know, I even feel like on Pinterest, there's it's been balloon heavy lately. So maybe we're just like primed to like stuff with balloons now. If you're like online, don't you feel like that? Or is it I just me not. and what I'm looking That's at? That's interesting. Oh, I, 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 I didn't I look know at all that. the party and decoration stuff. Like that's oh. like a really popular thing now. Yes, and basically think- since the um, Robin Thicke v- oh. video too, where he had those gigantic silver balloons. Yes, that says, yeah. yes, yes. And with the no helium, everybody's doing the balloon arches and all that. Yes, you just blow them up with the air, and you know I feel Can like they're Can we talk about that cheap. helium thing? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> Have we even talked about this on here? I like did a deep dive into this one night because were you the one who said there's yeah. no helium? Yes. Because you put me on like balloon duty, but you're like, don't worry about it if there's no helium. And I'm like, what is what? happening in the world? Right. On earth, right. Well, so do you, know, a, do you know the story about this? You probably do more than I do because you did a deep dive. I just know there's a helium shortage and that it's a finite resource like water. You can't just make more of it. And so they had to close like 70 party city locations because oh you can't gosh, get enough crazy. helium to source it. But it, it's one of those things that everyone talked about for about five days and then it went away and you thought, did the helium come back? Yeah, I'm not even sure. So right. it has to do with, um, but I know that, but you're right, it's a finite resource and I, it's released in like fracking, I think, too, oh. and stuff like that. Yeah. I really do think that that might be it. I'm going to have to like Google it real quick. But I do know, <laughs> the one thing I do know is that there were only like five helium manufacturers in the whole world. Wow. And like three of them, I think three of them were in Texas. And of those course. closed or something happened to those where they weren't able to get any. And so the, the rest of them were, there, don't, there aren't even any places that ever, they're like getting them all from the same source. Yeah. I didn't even know this was like something like that. I, I know. I didn't even. That's what annoys me is it? I feel like there should have been a lead up where it was like, hey, we're, we should probably conserve this. Instead, we're just using helium willy nilly all the time. Willy nilly, like <laughs> balloons. I'm just like sucking it up to make a funny voice over here. And I didn't know it was, should have been on the endangered species list. Yeah, and the, the, the thing that like species. we don't think about is that helium is is like we think about it in like balloons and all this stuff, yes. but it's used in like hospital stuff a lot. And aviation, the only way you can fly a plane or get on the moon or whatever is with helium. Um, oh, oh, mm-hmm. geez. Okay. And he, this is why serious. Do even, why do we even have balloons? <laughs> this feels like, could you imagine, could you even imagine if there was any other resource? Let's talk like, like, yeah. I can't even like think of a metaphor, but like if somehow insulin were like glitter or something, you know, (laughs) and they were like, Hey, this stuff can cure these people and this stuff can really help. And we really need it. And and it does all these great things, but it's good for parties. You would not be going and buying it up at the store. They would have a lock on that shit. For sure. I couldn't agree more, Sarah. This is hilarious. <laughs> That's why How I'm come like, nobody's talked about this. Right. And now it's urgent and it's too fucking late. Oh, Susie. Let, it, let the record show. <laughs> Susie and Sarah <laughs> were the first ones. Yeah, and we're conservationists over here. I'm not using helium for shit. Crazy, crazy. Ugh. I'm also conserving money because thanks to stamps.com, I don't have to spend as much. My stamps, uh, all my pack, uh, packages are shipped at a much better rate. I can get five cents off every first class stamp and 40% off priority, priority mail. But wait, there's more. You don't even have to go to the post office. You just print the postage from your desk, wherever you are, slap it on your package, and the postal worker comes and gets it and is like, thanks. And then no, no problem. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. 
It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use Stamps.com. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, which I use mine every single day without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Brain Candy. That's Stamps.com and enter Brain Candy. Sweet. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So we solved the helium crisis. Definitely. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's all sorted out. Hey, there was this, um, you know when, like, people, so, okay, there was a thing where on a campus, I believe it was conservative people, decided to make a fake petition against that walk sign that has, like, the white guy on it that lights up and lets you walk across the street. Yeah. But they pretended like they were enraged that it was just a white man. And so it was exclusive and uh, offensive to people of color and got all these college students to sign it and agree that it was okay. What do you think of these gags? It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah. Why did they do that? This is like, well, it's not like this, but that what pops into my (laughs) head is when, um, uh, people take like the one story of the female like falsely accusing the male yes. of sexual assault and make that yes. the the opsy yes. look they're all and i'm like that's not it this is different yeah. and it's like they don't look at any of the details of it and oh it's it's focus i mean so it pisses me off well, okay, and I c- totally agree, and it pisses me off too because it undoes a lot of the good that we're doing in the world or yes. that people are doing, I should say, not we. We're not doing any fucking good. Um, Cheering them on. <laughs> but why is it, do you think that, do you think there's something about the collegiate moment oh. or culture that encourages that sort of pile on where you're like, yeah, I'm mad about that to outrage culture? Uh. I wonder more if it has something to do with the overlap of like life cycles and the like you know natural like transitioning into becoming a young adult and yeah. like leaving the nest and what comes with that because you also see kind of this it goes one of two ways based on what we looked at in school with religion where yeah. they'll either completely turn away from it and like do their own thing or they'll really deep dive into it Mm -hmm. and that because it's they're like who am i and so it's almost like doubling down on your identity okay and so i wonder if that time in their life being away from the nest this is their first time on their own making their own decisions that it's like look at me making this big decision for myself and so their ideas become like not more radical but more deeply like tied to who they are you know you know what i mean also here's another thing that fits into what you're saying where you know when you go on on your own you sort of push back on a lot of the things Mm -hmm. you were indoctrinated to believe growing up so there's this natural tension with authority. So if yes. someone's coming to you with a petition about a, a walk, a walk sign, whatever, what would you call it? A walk signal? Yeah. Uh, then you're like, yeah, that's Crossing from signal, maybe. yeah. The government puts those up, and the, yeah. the government is a part of this. The authority that I'm rebelling against, so they must be bad. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Idea. And nobody's too. Re- and it's the same thing as the headlines. You know? Yeah. How are they getting pitched this? <laughs> right, right, right. You know? <laughs> right, true. Because if somebody was, like, convincing enough... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Every time idea. somebody solicits me at a, like, grocery store, or, you know, when they have the little flyers and everything, I just ask the f- only question that matters is, who's paying for this? Ooh, that's a great tip. You don't have to ask any other questions. Okay, and what's the answer usually? I'm sure it varies, well, but... Well, th- they'll tell you whether it's like, you know, you'll know if it's this local whatever resort, the PTA or whatever the hell it is, or if it's like, oh, Coca-Cola or, oh, the, mm. the whatever lobbyist group, like, you know, because you never know. You always that, just ask who... Or the Democrat or Republican Party, because they, yeah. they pitch it to you in a way that you're like, I'm for that. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, who's paying for this? That's all That you is such a good idea. 
you. I, I, I'm sure I heard this in some political science class somewhere and it's like stuck. So very I can't smart. say this is an original idea, I don't think. It is kind of weird though. Have you seen these things where if a person were to take a quiz online about their ideology? Oh, yep. You we know, did where this you, in school. Yeah. Like, what do you think about this issue? And you don't know the context of who would agree or not with you mm-hmm. that we all tend to have opinions that don't align with how we think we believe. Is that freaky or what? Yeah, really freaky. We did that. We absolutely did that in in my first day of uh, a U.S. government class. That's a good idea to do It was great. Oh, she was such a good professor. And did you find Super that was the case too. with some of your <laughs> with some of your opinions? Were they uh, misaligned? A few of them. A few yeah. of them related to what was it? I mean, nothing. I think it was more like superficial stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing well, related to anything social or anything like that. Maybe a little bit financial, but also yeah. this was when I was twenty. Yeah, right. So this is before I like, you know, knew a what, thing about a thing. What about now though? I Let's was surprised. you identify as what politically? A Dem- Liberal Democrat. Okay. Yeah. Would is there anything in which you feel like doesn't fit into that that you believe or get excited no. about? No. Oh really? Nothing. No. I can't I mean I can you think of something that Yes. What? Um, I have a knee jerk reaction whenever for example someone like north korea Uh starts peacocking and Uh calling our bluff all of a sudden i become one of those people that's like we have the best military in the world we'll kick your ass yeah i do i have those moments where i'm like really you want to fuck with us so and that's a conservative posture yeah okay that's fair yeah Yeah. i do love our military i know i do too like i I think i I really, I now I proudly do because I I now have have the like, you know, experiential, like it's unless envy is like spent a lot of time with people in the military or like you know I don't but are, agree. Are you philosophically a pacifist? Yes. Right. I don't so, agree with what we're doing. Like I don't agree with like, you know, how sometimes the military goes about action, but mm-hmm. just like having it for that. <laughs> I know it comes in handy, doesn't it? Comes in handy sometimes, <laughs> you know, for the thing, you know, I know. It just and I think it just meant leadership is the thing that matters. Well, and like historically, I get really interested in things like World War II and those oh, wow, times really? when it feels yeah, when it feels like the military and the government were doing things that were righteous. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, they really were. Like there was that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, first, I know. <laughs> yeah see that's like the big thing that is like the let's just like oh i'll get along it (sighs) makes sense so that you would have fewer of those things though because you were never conservative but i used to be correct yeah yeah yeah. so i can still understand a lot of the ways that conservatives think um especially like about abortion and stuff because i used to have those feelings so i get it yeah i'm definitely not liberal because i love me a little order and Oh you know. wait, you're not a liberal. Wait, like, what? Like, like, what are they, uh, what are they called? Uh, 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 no, like when you don't want any of the rules. What the hell is it called? Like anti-authoritarian. No, no, there's a name for it. Anarchy. Like the Independent party. No, oh. that's not it either. <laughs> what is the one? Oh my god, they even have like. <sighs> Someone is yelling at their not, phone I know right they now. Are. They really are. <laughs> it's the liber- It's the one. Oh, libertarian. Yes, libertarian. Okay. That's what okay. I was thinking. Well, oh, that, gosh, close uh, you don't think that's conservative in some ways? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I used, so you have the, some when, of those When moments. I was younger, before I knew anything about like what I was saying and I was just like <laughs> spouting out the words that I thought were right, like this is, and this is, this is exactly in line with what you started saying yes. about these kids who signed this. I just said, well, I'm very liberal, mm-hmm. so I'm probably a libertarian. Oh. And I didn't even know what the hell that meant. But That's I was like, so yeah, cute. I'm that. And then I looked it up and I was like, I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not. Turns out. Turns out I'm not that at all. So well, one way you can find out what the heck you are is by taking classes. And you can do that no matter where you are in your life or what you're up to with Skillshare. I'm such a big fan of this service, which encourages people to have lifetime learning and to carry on 
uh, like we you said, I thought it was such a good point when you said it was like that book we read last month, Range, where oh yeah, you can learn about all oh, kinds of things. So important, and it's so cool whether it's photography or creative writing or design. Um, there's so so many classes that you can take on Skillshare that would probably interest you and you think, oh, I don't have time or whatever, but you can do it from your computer. And I just think as a lifetime learner myself, it's such a great opportunity. And I loved your idea yes. about taking a class on finances. Oh, yeah. Like there's so many advice. things where you think, I wish I knew more about that. And you could through mm-hmm. Skillshare. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering Brain Candy Podcast listeners two months of unlimited access. Hello. Unlimited, unlimited. free access okay. to thousands of classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Brain Candy. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Brain Candy to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Brain Candy. And you know what I think it's cool for is if maybe you didn't go to college and you feel a little intimidated yes. and you think maybe that might be right for you. What a good idea to start with that. See if it gets your motor running and then go from there. I'm just obsessed with you. I love it. I love it. I I went to the library today, Sarah, and (laughs) the book that I had placed on hold Mm -hmm. when I went to check it out, the librarian was like, oh, I just started reading this. It's really good. And I was uh, like super excited that she and I were (laughs) reading the same book. Yeah. I'm walking out and I thought, oh my God, I think I'm starstruck. You are. By my library. Yeah. You're basically like the teacher's pet. You're like brown nosing your library right now in a way. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what do you think about the book? Yeah. You're like trying to get on her good side. Maybe she'll like hook you up and like wave a light, late fee like you would even have them. <laughs> wave a late fee, right? Like wink, wink, no problem, Suze. You're right. Oh, but you know. That that's how I feel. Anyway, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you should like bring her something. Like, you're like, hey, I baked these <gasps> I cookies. Thought for about you. that. My Seuss. banana bread. I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, come on. I feel like librarians love banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but they do. They should. Anyway. Oh gosh. Here's that's a, so funny. Here's a bit of good news that I think oh, I you news. will love, especially. Yeah. Um, the city of Berlin decided to not name any more streets after men until oh. there are equal number of women and men streets. Well, I yes. just love that. How cool is this? I didn't know there were so many ma- male streets. Oh, think about it in the U.S., like Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, like named out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All yeah. those. And yeah. I get why that I was that thinking happened. like Mike Lane, Joe <laughs> Lane, Paul Street. <laughs> That's not a thing, Sarah. Sorry. I, no, that was my fault. I should have no, specified. No, that was... I could have used a little deductive reasoning to get to my <laughs> own conclusion. No, yeah, just of the, the notable people from history or, you know, in government That's or whatever. That's fantastic. Could, <clears throat> cause you rem- could you imagine, like, that does something to us. We, that's, oh, I love Representation. Like that. It does matter. It matters so much. Yes. I Even mean, where the streets are matter. Yeah, that's a good point. They should it really take a look does. at that. I guess they're just Absolutely. trying to... Absolutely. they got to start somewhere. Yes, But yes. on the same topic of famous uh, German, <laughs> like, <laughs> fancy people, I was reading the biography of Albert Einstein, oh. and he, get this. Okay. You will die. Oh, I'm gearing up. Sarah. What? He and his wife had uh-huh. a baby, uh-huh. and it was a girl, uh-huh. and... I still cannot, I have to do a deep dive on like what the fuck happened, but they had this baby for a while Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then they're like, you know what? Let's not anymore. And gave her to someone. What? Yes. Oh God. You know, when you're reading and you're in silence and you're by yourself, I audibly said, what? What? When I'm Did reading they it, their child, like, yes. Could you imagine it, like Lincoln Sage being like, "Nah, I'm good." I, I don't think it was that. I think it was within the first few months or maybe a year. Oh Jesus! But, but that still, seems even worse. That's like when your in- caring <laughs> instincts are highest. And they're like, you know what? No thanks. Oh, that, and oh then they God. had another. Wait, who took kid. the? Kid. Well, that's the weirdest part. They everyone says they know who got it. This other couple that they were friends with. 
but they lost track. Like, there's no record. You can't find out where she ended oh up. Oh, my God. So does that mean people are floating around? Re- yes. Like Albert Einstein's relatives and don't even know it? Yeah, or maybe they do and they just keep it a secret. Wow. And it's like that. You know how we saw the Bundy tapes and it turned out he had a daughter whilst he was in prison with that, like, fan that he married? Oh, yeah. And then the granddaughter just went on fucking Snapchat and outed her whole family. It was like, yeah, that's my mom, Rose. What? What? what wait, who's did? Bundy's Ted, Bundy's Ted Bundy's biological granddaughter just this week what? went on fucking Snapchat and was like, yeah, that's my mom, Rose. And she's Rose Bundy of the Ted Bundy oh. family. Oh. Okay. Can you believe they worked all that all those years to be quiet and then like some little kid was like, "Yeah, here." Oh my god. Mhm. That's cr- that is I'm just crazy. dropping bombshells today. You really are. <laughs> I like I and and, and now I, I just, it really does feel like that. And I'm like, I don't know which thing I I need to like I'm sorry, process yes. all of this. <laughs> like I'm sorry. I have so no other they, friends. Then Albert Einstein had an <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I have no one else to tell oh, this God. to. And Lincoln's like, uh huh, uh huh. Let's talk about <laughs> Rust or whatever. The Adam game he goes, loves. "What book are you reading?" I'm like, Albert Einstein's biography. No, no follow up questions after that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, like, I gotta tell Sarah okay. only. So they had another child. Yes, Hans Albert Einstein. <laughs> and then they like kept that one. Yes. Okay, that's more messed up. <laughs> it is. How much longer? How much time? A few years only. Okay. You only know, a just few years? A couple years. They better have made some really damn good scientific discoveries. That, that E equals MC <laughs> swear shit should better have happened right about then. Or else there's really no excuse for ditching your kid. That's what it pr- proposed in the book. Was because that he you was can't <laughs> say that there's any... Sorry. No, I'm go just ahead. heated up. Go ahead, you go can't ahead. say that there's any... like. It's not like he was struggling or they were like, no, you know, it, she it wasn't was 15 like that. And it wasn't that they were a married couple with, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Who just chose science over their kid. Well, and like he, yeah, he was working and it was basically like, this is inconvenient. <laughs> I, but then the question becomes like, if you're, oh, think about, mm-hmm. there's no way that his parenting and ch- and social skills could have been like on nor- at normal levels with the intelligence like that they're just i just you don't- know what's crazy when i was reading the book though he um honorably claimed he was not exceptional in his iq which i think is lovely and probably untrue but he claims at least that his strength was just he he said that he really didn't get into learning until later in life and all the questions that most kids ask, you know, like about space or the way the yeah, world works. Yeah, but that's, you're still my... I yeah. know, I he, know. He, uh, and you know what? His humble answer is yes. part, reflects his intelligence. Okay, okay, we're not buying it. I, I, I mean, he could say, come on. It Ow. gave me hope. I thought, well, that's how I feel about myself. I'm not exceptional. I just have a lot of curiosity. Yeah, and you know who says that? Exceptional people. <laughs> it's the same thing about that I say about bad moms and good moms. I'm dying. The moms who are out there going like, I am the best. I'm like, yeah. mm, maybe you should like you? check. Most moms are like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm messing everything up. I just want to be the good mom, and I feel like I'm failing at everything. I'm like, don't worry. You're a great mom. Yeah, okay, that's I get 99%, that. That's ninety nine percent. That's been my my what I've seen. And he was known as being very jovial, very social, and um, easy to talk to and stuff. He he didn't have that sort of spectrum thing where there's a yeah. bit of a social weirdness. Um, so but now I wonder if maybe he was a narcissist. Well, maybe. That's because possible. why would you do that? And what is about his wife? I know it makes no sense, Sarah. And then I always think, well, I mean, what if this kid was like the bad seed? Yeah, right. They were like, uh uh. (laughs) We're blaming poor Albert. He solves like all the problems. I'm (laughs) kidding, people. I love babies. They're all straight from heaven. They are not. I'll tell you what is straight from heaven, though, is the ring security system I got cooking. Oh, yeah. This is. Oh, my God. Were you there when I was worried my cat was dead? Yes. We were watching it like crazy. Link kept showing me, and I'm like, what am I looking at? When He's we like, were in She's Nashville. She's supposed to be there. 
we left our cat for a few days with plenty of food and water, and she can go out in the catio and like hang out the outside. The catio, <laughs> stop it! Don't you know, even think I was going to let that one. Because we have a courtyard, and so there was plenty. Yes. Of, everything was fine, but. I was watching the camera like, where is she? Did she die? Did I lock her in a room accidentally before we left? Anyway, thanks to Ring, we have cameras everywhere in our house that let us know what's going on in our house when we're not there. So we we're caught her on tape and we're fine then after that. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer, and in my case, the catio safer. Um, and you can get these smart video doorbells, all the ones you see on the news all the time of like catching people doing crazy crap in, in front of your house. And you can talk to them via your phone. Uh, and if someone leaves a package, you can say, just leave it or whatever. You can communicate with them and you get an alert. As a listener, you have a special offer on a Ring Starter Kit available right now with a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Go to ring.com slash brain candy. That's ring.com slash brain candy. Yeah, man. These are essential at this point, I think. I know. I have my new box. I have yet to install Oh, yes. Yeah. Maybe Adam should put that up for you. Oh, oh my God. I would love that. Because I was like, why hasn't Sarah invited me over yet? And then I thought, I'm going to just oh. have to invite myself. And oh then my I'll bring God, you can. Adam and he can do like her honeydew list. Oh, Suze, the only reason I haven't invited you over cause, is because I just like yesterday was finally able to get like all the crap out of the garage and the guest room that were like. Yeah, but I could have helped you with your crap. Oh my gosh. Well, I still need my help, your help organizing my kitchen. Yeah, all right. I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> and Adam right. will, like, you know, set up your ring, whatever, and yeah. all the other things you need. Yes. Like <laughs> Although you're very capable. Well, thank you. But sometimes it just feels like sometimes you just need two people for things. That's true. Like, I got yeah. a big old shelf I got to hang. That, That's like, hard, yeah. I'm going to have to come up with some really... I mean, I had to invite a neighbor over last time I hung it up in the old oh house. God. Because, you know. Yeah, no, we can sort you out. Yeah. Um, how about there's this company in Asia that's, I forget the name of it, but the article called it transplant clothes. Maybe that's the name of the brand. And basically let's say you have a shirt that has a stain or a cut or whatever, a rip. Um, you can take a picture and send it to them and they'll be like, yeah, we got you. And then you send it to them and they will use other pieces of clothing to create like a new piece. With your that old like piece. That? Basically, like, they'll use your old item and then cut off the part that's not Ooh. good anymore. And then they'll add a fabric and make it into a whole new piece. And it's all free. All you have to do is pay for shipping. It's free? Yeah. Okay. This, yeah. Is, this is great. And they were they oh created it to um, it. encourage organ donation. That's why they call it transplant clothes because they want it to be like, see how you got a whole new shirt from your old one that wasn't useful yeah. anymore we can do that with our own body parts I, which aw. you know is kind of profane but it's true no, it's very important because yeah. a lot of people are on those donation lists and there's a whole bunch of new stuff that's they're you know coming out with to get people connected to the people who are able to donate and yeah so it's really important yeah and what a clever thing and the clothes are really cute and they're new and i love that yeah well it's a i'm always look. a big fan of the you know upcycle or slash recycle yes. clothes thing and you know how much i hate throwing away clothes let alone and you know that could be used again oh it's like i hate it so this is great mm-hmm. and everybody like you know i was talking to my mom about this that it's really interesting to me that there is a whole like new generation of people who don't know how to sew. Oh yeah, I don't ha- I don't have that gift. You don't know how to sew, or I should say skill. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Nobody ever taught just, me. You, look, like that, I don't know why it just was such a important part of like growing up, and we just fixed everything. And it was like you have a hole in your pants, you sew it. You rip this, you sew it. You have maybe this, that's you- the class I should take on Skillshare. Oh, Sue's that's a great idea because you seem like somebody who would be into it. Yeah, I would. I am into it. I like that it's idea. It's really fun. And it's really fun to be able, especially with like the kind of stuff you're into, like your style, to be able to even just make a pillow for mm-hmm. your couch. And mm-hmm. then you go to the fabric store, which you have so many of beautiful ones in LA. You pick yeah. out cool mid-century modern fabric 
and then you like make your own pillows and let me tell you nothing makes you love an item more yeah in your home than when you make it do you have a sewing machine yes get out of here of course i sew everything every pillow that i have the decorative i sewed but who taught you my mom Right, you're lucky. You're right. I'm so lucky. In fact, she, when she was over the other day, well, not the other day, but a, like a month ago or so, when she was helping me pack, she found this jar I have. I call it my, well, it's called the, a gratitude jar, and I write down things mm-hmm. I'm grateful for, and, and I stick it in the jar. And it's for, <laughs> I've had it for like 10 years, and it's full. It's like bursting which is great. And so she was, she found it and I was like, Oh, just like, you know, take a look. Like, cause she was like, Oh, what do you write in here? And the one that she happened to pull out was I'm grateful for my mom for teaching me how to sew. How happy were you that she picked that one? Oh my God. <laughs> I was through the roof. I was like, Oh, oh winning yeah. daughter points. I did that. that. <laughs> I did that. I wrote that down. And then we had a whole discussion. This is how it came up. This is exactly how this came up about how when, nobody else because she said, oh, that's thank you so much. And I said, well, thank you so much for teaching me because yes. it's amazing. Like I was on uh, – I was going to a wedding once and I was on the bus. Like we were all taking like a shuttle to the wedding. And I wasn't in the wedding but I was riding along with all the groomsmen. And one of the groomsmen kneels down and rips his pants clean in half. No. He, he's a groomsman. They were driving to the wedding. They're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? This is an emergency. The worst part, wasn't even wearing underwear underneath, I think. Maybe he was. I think he maybe was. But either way. Question mark. Question mark. I can't remember that. Or somehow maybe he put them on. I don't know. But I said, I can help you. And we ran out of the bus and we went to the hotel lobby and we asked them for a mending kit, which they always have. And I sewed, I went to the bathroom, sewed up his pants. Like he took them off, of course. And uh, uh, then sewed them up and put them back on and hopped back on the bus. And it was in five minutes. Wow. And I felt like, in my mind, I know I didn't, but I, to myself at that moment, in a very, uh, uh, feeling very proud, I was like, pretty much saved the wedding. Well, kind of. <laughs> That's what I told myself. Because what if he Which was is just- not a humble thought to have. I mean, just <laughs> like, I was just like, yeah, save the day here. No, it's fun to celebrate victories like that, where you're like, I could contribute to helping yeah. this day go smoothly. That's awesome. And I really didn't know a lot the people getting married, like a lot of the yeah. people there. So it made me feel like, oh, now I have an in. Yeah, I'm the girl who sewed the pants, and now they could be friends with me. You had a purpose. Yes. And if you hadn't done that, and let's say he just had to walk around like that the whole night, <laughs> that could have ruined his friendship with the bride and groom. Yeah, and also it almost feels like a, a like if if I were like a first responder and I saw somebody who yeah. just like had some injury and I didn't tend to it, I'd be walking around with like the guilt of feeling like, man, I could have done something. I couldn't just not raise my hand and be like, I'll sew it. Yes. It's the right thing to do. I'm so happy that somebody taught you how to do crap like oh, that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, shout out to Sal. <laughs> When she learned from her mom? She, I, I'm sure she did learn from her mom, but she also was a wardrobe stylist in the film industry. So she, but she always made, and my aunt, everybody made their clothes. Let it me was like ask you this. the thing to do back in the day. This will be telling. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did she teach your brothers how to sew? Uh, yes. Jordan knows how to sew. Yes, I love Lucas that. Lucas does not know how to sew, I think. And unfortunately, poor Luke, we, we kind of <laughs> make the jokes about this too. He's not handy either. That's all right. But, which is totally all right. Yeah. But the only reason he isn't is because Jordan and I would, if I didn't do the job, Jordan did the job and Luke, but there was no job left for Lucas to do. Oh, so he's like, why would I bother learning how to do this stuff? That's why people like youngest children like me are just useless. No, 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 no. Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect. Incorrect. You know what they are? They're the opposite. They're the innovators and they're the ones Aww. who are the inventors. In That's fact, nice. most youngest, like the youngest, if you look at like the oldest are the politicians and the younger ones are like Steve Jobs and pr- maybe Ooh. like Albert einstein They're They're the ones who create unique and individual ways to go about solving the problem or doing the task because the other ways have already been taken. All right, I like that. There you go, Suze. Turn, put, that po- put that positive attitude on that. Boom. <laughs> well, and you should have a positive attitude about open fit, which is the way you Ooh, can do. exercise and get your body moving, but you don't have to go to the gym and see all those weirdos and like worry about what you're going to wear to the gym and all that. 
OpenFit can be accessed from your phone, your tablet, your computer, wherever you are. If you're at a hotel, if you're home like me and you just don't want to go to the gym, this is a perfect option. They have Extend Bar. I always talk about that because I know how expensive those gyms yes. are. And you can do this so much more affordably. And um, they also, you can search by like the amount of time you want to do. Like I tend to do just 10 minutes at a time. It's affordable, it's accessible, and you get what you put in. See results within the first 30 days. Uh, OpenFit has changed the way I work out, that is for sure, because I didn't before and now I do. And texting our code BRAINCANDY to 303030, you can join us on our fitness journey personalized just for you. Right now during the OpenFit 30-Day Challenge, our listeners get a a special extended 30-day free trial membership to OpenFit when you text BRAINCANDY to 303030. You get full access to OpenFit, all the workouts and nutrition information totally free. Again, just text Brain Candy to 303030. And Sarah, we have a guest. Oh, I love a guest. I love a guest too. I mentioned her on a previous episode. Her name is Jill Heinerth, and she's the woman that is a cave diver. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And oh, her right. book is That called- were underwater caves. Yes. That I she's incorrectly scuba. called spelunking, not... Spelunking scuba. Right. Yes, yeah, she goes the down. The scariest thing. Ooh. Ooh. She goes down into the earth and looks in these caves. And she so cool. is such a f- badass. Yes. And so brave. But the way she lays it out in the book is helpful because she describes what it's like. She talks about the hardships and how difficult it is. She describes why she would want to do something that so many of her colleagues have perished doing because that's the number one question for her is like, why would you do something that is so dangerous? Cause it's not even a little bit. This is like, Uh, yeah. Cuckoo. God, I get, it freaks me out thinking about it. Cause I know that I, Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. And she's had to go down and retrieve. Nope. People. Nope. No. That she I loves. mean, yes, she has, but oh, no way. I could not even handle that. And yet she still does it. And oh, so my God. She describes why she does it, why it's important, and why it, it makes her life better. Um, and her book is called Into the Planet, My Life as a Cave Diver. She does so, writes about her life so thoughtfully and um, makes you understand. Because you can apply it to your own life. Because she says one out of every five people has a certain gene scientifically Mm -hmm. in their genome that makes them require more to get that high. I'm sure we talked about that with that rock climbing guy. Yeah. How he he had his brain checked and they were like, oh, like nothing scares him. Yeah. No function in the amygdala. And I feel like that's true with us as well. I know it is. Yeah. We wouldn't be on that. We wouldn't have gone on the challenge and kept going on the challenge. Yeah, and there's a part of us that needs a lot of adrenaline to get the same high that someone might get from eating an ice cream cone or right. whatever. And some people, like me, get it from acquiring knowledge, reading tons of books. <sighs> yeah. And other people need to go in the freaking caves of, like, mm-hmm. under the earth. Mm-hmm. And she describes how we know more about the moon than we do about our own oceans. I, isn't that crazy? Crazy. And we haven't explored any of it. And it's like more risky in a way. Yeah. Yes. Um, so she oh, it's so talks cool. about what that's like and how Ooh. it all goes and what it's like to be under that water and see your air is running out. And oh. it's freaky. It's the most freaky. It's, it's, it really is. It's the most, uh, it's such an example of self control yeah. and. And, but more like not self, it's like presence and the ability to be in control of one's mind. I should say. Yeah. Yes. And that is, I mean, whoo, that's a peaceful place to be. And I can't wait to find out what's in I, the back of her trunk. <laughs> right, right, right. She's like flippers and a scuba mask. <laughs> you'll find out. Listen, everybody, you'll love it. And read her book, Into the Planet. Welcome, Jill Heinerth, to the show. Welcome, Jill. Um, first of all, congratulations on your new book, Into the Planet, Jill. Thanks. How are you feeling about it? 
Um, I'm really excited. <laughs> I can't wait to get it out into the world now. <laughs> Are you scared at all? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's a very vulnerable experience, like yeah. throwing your whole life out into the world. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, you get yeah. personal. You talk about your life, mm-hmm. not just about diving. Yeah. And I would yeah. feel really nervous, like, oh, my gosh, people are going to know my business. Yeah, no, that's true. And, I mean, you know, even having my family read it, they got to read it in advance just recently. Um, but I was really nervous about that. Yeah. You know, would they, would they turn to me and say, well, that's not happening. Oh, I remember it. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of stuff. But yeah. they must be really yeah. proud. I mean, and you must be too. Yeah. How, do, don't you feel like this is a real accomplishment? Yeah, it it, it feels like a big moment in my life. So. It is a beautiful yeah. book. I loved yeah. reading it. I know Thank our you. listeners are going to love it. Um, and it's so, you do such a great job of making something that is very foreign to most people feel mm-hmm. accessible and you feel I felt as a reader like I was experiencing these things with you and oh, I wondered if that great. was hard for you was it hard to paint that picture yeah. well yeah I started the book a long time ago and I have to say that it, it's you know my editors that were really helpful in the process where they kept sending me back and saying no this needs to be more about you you need to get more personal what did it smell like feel like sound like and you, how did you feel and and um, in that end they felt more like my own personal psychologist yeah <laughs> you know? well that's yeah, a lot of so. the experiences that you describe include mm-hmm. trauma and and drama yeah. and i wonder yeah. if it was almost like a ptsd experience to rewrite about it Oh, yeah. At times, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, It was hard to write about. I mean, when I recorded the audio book just recently, Mm -hmm. I was in the studio um, reading the chapter that's called My Dead Friends. And I I couldn't get through it. Yeah. I just, I kept breaking down. It was, it was incredibly emotional. And I, I looked up and there's, there's the recording engineer and the director <laughs> on the other side of the glass wall. And they are also bawling their eyes out. Oh my at, which God. Point, <laughs> at which point, it just made me laugh. I thought, okay, this is crazy. Yeah. That's a surreal moment yeah. when your, mm-hmm. your words are having that effect on people, but I mean, yeah. what you talk about is intense and important mm-hmm. and for you, very personal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the end, I, like, I haven't heard the audio book since I recorded it. So I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> we recorded it enough times that it doesn't sound like I'm completely like hysterical. <laughs> but I'm sure that you will know that I'm crying when you oh. listen to that part of the book. But, you know what? I bet that'll yeah. make it even better, though, because they'll sense your emotion. Mm. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Your emotions are like now just part of our entertainment, but I mean, it's, it's a fascinating story that you've, you've lived your life. Mm. Um, so I know you talk about in the book how, you know, of course people are always just baffled by why you'd want to put yourself Mm -hmm. in such dangerous positions. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. for me, I was more, I'm more struck by just how uncomfortable a, a lot of it is in terms of like getting to the site and you have to often camp Mm -hmm. and you're cold and obviously you get Mm -hmm. wet and Mm -hmm. that doesn't bother you? Oh, sure. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny. I mean, sometimes I'm on an expedition and it's miserable. It's absolutely uncomfortable, miserable. I guess it's like, boom camp, you know, but, um, but there's always a reason this, it's always worth it to me. Like there's, there's always a purpose that seems higher than that and whether Mm. that purpose is educational or research or whether it's just that I know I'll be able to inspire people to do things that aren't easy like I have learned that I'm capable of far more than my wildest imagination would have ever you know conceived for me and and I guess I want to share that with people like we are capable of far more than we think we are oh that's lovely I mean I'll take your word for it Um, (laughs) when when you started the book you had a very different life a different career or I should say when the book Mm -hmm. begins that's where you're placed in this different life very successful, but Mm -hmm. obviously not in the sea. Um, Would you recommend people following their passion in the way that you did? Or do you think it takes a special kind of person? Oh, you know, it was really hard for me to sell everything and 
you know, leave the life that everybody around me thought was so successful. Yeah. Uh, it, that's hard. It, it, it's, you just, again, it's vulnerable. Um, but having had that experience now in retrospect, I would say, wow, you know, you got to follow your passions. Like if I was still working in four walls inside an office, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I, I feel sad when people work in a job they hate for their entire life, just hopefully to make it to retirement. Like, yeah. I sort of rather worried about the retirement later and ensure that I'm living a full and happy life now. And, you know, everything you do, you'll still disappoint some people um, in terms of their vision for you. Like, you've got to live your own authentic dream to be truly fulfilled. Man, I bet it takes such bravery and courage because it's a risky business to leave something safe yeah. and comfortable and do something you yeah. don't really know. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's terrifying at times. <laughs> I, I mean, in a way I'm still living that life. Like I, I don't work a steady job. You know, I, I'm always looking for the next gig and yet there's more and more people in this world that are doing the same yeah, thing. That's the gig true. economy is now <laughs> something, you know, we're all, all trying to change one job to the next. Don't I know um, it? I mean, podcasting is yeah. similar in that way. It's like a wild Absolutely. west. It's very weird. Yeah. So you kind of have to say yes to everything and do your best, but always be thinking about hmm, what's what's next. Um, so, you know, maybe I kind of jumped into that job a bit earlier, but I think it's, it's probably a pretty good model for people today. You're going to have 10 jobs and you're going to have to move and be flexible and and hopefully doing what you love because then that's when the magic happens. Well, and you say that it was sort of terrifying, um, but you've almost, you describe in the book almost like an embracing of fear and you say that you dance yeah. in the joy of uncertainty. And yes. I really love that idea. And I wondered if you have thoughts about how people can employ the same uh, worldview. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people always say to me, gosh, you're fearless. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm scared all the time, right? <laughs> but but I think that, that discovery, joy, exploration, all of that happens when you're afraid, when you're about to do something new. And for me, it's it's a very physical expression. I go into dark underwater caves, into places that terrify people. They're so claustrophobic. Um, but but everybody in this world does the same thing in their own life, whether they're putting a report on their desk of their mm. boss that seems a little bit edgy, or if they're suddenly asked to do something they've never done before in work, yeah. we all get those little like rushing heartbeats where it's like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that when you do take that step into the darkness to do something new and exciting, like you can turn fear into excitement pretty quickly. I mean, just jump into a roller coaster and that's exactly what you're doing. You're turning fear into excitement. And um, in that opportunity of discovery learning, as I call it, you have a chance to do something that's either, you know, new and remarkable for you or maybe new and remarkable for humanity. And so I hope everybody embraces more discovery and exploration in your life. I mean, mm -hmm. the world is wired for feedback. When we fall because we, you know, jumped off of something, we skin our knees and we look at our risk assessment again and revise how we do things. But but if we had never climbed the tree and fallen, then we would have missed that chance to see the world from above. And, mm. and so, yeah, I think stepping towards fear is a good thing because so often in our lives, like, especially even in the political context today, um, politicians that want to, you know, manipulate humanity do well when people are scared, mm. you know, but when people aren't scared, when they're willing to push things a little bit and step towards the unknown, then that's when they get their power back. There are so many times in the book where it felt like a metaphor, you know, when you would describe the caves and they, mm -hmm. it felt like you were describing just life in general um, oh, yeah. you know, you say caves are cunning and just when you think everything's yeah. okay, then you get, make a wrong turn or whatever. And it felt like, mm -hmm. wow, this is, she's just talking about life here. You don't even have to go into a cave to know that feeling. Don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, 
the caves have taught me a lot of things and stepping towards fear has, has really been formative in, in my life. It wasn't the caves that taught me about, about mm. fear. It was just fighting off a home intruder, you know, Yeah, that I was crazy. describe in the book. I mean, it was that visceral experience of, I have to fight because there's nowhere to run and I have to defend myself or I might die. And, and having had that, terrifying experience early in life probably built the the woman that I am today and probably built the woman that it was able to go into the dark caves and and have Mm. these you know death defying experiences and and know that I could survive and get home Yeah. yeah you were such a badass when that happened I was like I would not be able to do that Oh, but I think as I described in the book, I didn't feel like a badass. I just wanted to hide under the covers at <laughs> first. I mean, and that's that's normal. You know? Yes, you just right. Hide. Yeah. Um, but and that's where I think everybody has this in them because I was forced into the situation where I had to defend myself. There was no other option. I I couldn't jump out the window. I didn't have a telephone. I, you know, there there was no one to call for help, and it was just me against this intruder and and you know given that question we all want to survive and and so i believe that the you know most of us will will fight for our lives it's just having had that very direct experience and realizing that i could take that same attitude to other things in my life that really benefited me but it took me a while to figure that out yeah well it's cool though that something (laughs) that really was horrifying that happened to you you were able to turn into yeah. something that taught you about your character and your uh capabilities so yeah. that's awesome um you were describing in the book you know just the experience of going into the water and doing what you do and you i think you described it as going back into the womb experience mm-hmm. i was curious if yeah. you could expand about that what does that mean to you mm-hmm. so um for listeners that don't really understand what I do, I, I swim through water-filled caves, so passages inside the earth that are filled floor to ceiling with water. And so I'm in this environment in you know the womb of Mother Earth, or or I also describe it as swimming through the veins of Mother Earth because there's flowing water through our planet, much like our own circulatory system in our bodies. And When I'm in that environment, you know, swimming in your drinking water inside the planet, it's, it's, it feels almost, you know, you know, primordial to me, Mm -hmm. like, like, like it's fulfilling some very, very basic comforting instinct to me. No, I realize that's not for everyone. <laughs> most people think of swimming in an underwater cave and go, oh my God. <laughs> but for me, it's almost spiritual. Really? It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was I'm thinking... Definitely, go ahead. Oh, I'm definitely more comfortable underwater than on land. What I are you saying? Graceful. Oh, God, yeah. I think like, I'm not the most graceful person in gravity. I've rolled my van, in fallen gravity. off my motorcycle, and crashed my bike, right? <laughs> but underwater, I feel like it doesn't matter like what size, sex, like body type, whatever yeah. you are. When you're in the water, you're beautiful and you move with the fluidity of a mermaid. And that great equalizer just makes me so at home in the mm. underwater world. Well, you know, I, you hear people that do like certain kinds of, I don't know, hallucin, whatever kind of drugs where they feel yeah. like they're one with the world. It sounds like that's mm-hmm. what it feels like for you mm-hmm. being down there. It is. is it? Yeah. Oh my God. It really is. Yeah. People like I've had my husband say, I don't even understand how you move there. I watch you underwater and he says, you just kind of think and you move somewhere. And I don't really see a whole lot of like motion happening. Wow. <laughs> and, it's like you're willed from place to place. And, and I really feel that comfortable underwater, um, but not so on land. I'm a bit <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so when you're down there, yeah. what is the uh, goal for you? Is it about just personal exploration and, and uh, enjoyment and the challenge of it? Or is there an mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. environmental goal? Or are you looking for treasure? Mm-hmm. What the heck? What are you doing down there? <laughs> There always has to be a good reason, because if I'm going to take these huge risks, because a lot yeah. of 
what I do is extraordinarily risky. There has to be a good reason. So sometimes it's scientific research. For me, I'm really, really embedded in um, communicating about water issues and global climate change. Um, so, so that's very important to me to, to have a motivation that makes the risk worth it. But it's also about pure exploration. I'm still that little kid in kindergarten <laughs> that loves show and tell. Like, but in this case, I get to go to a place that nobody's ever been before. It might as well be the moon and bring back images to show people the most remarkable stuff that they would never have heard about yeah. happening inside the planet. I yeah. mean, even on your Instagram, I was following your Instagram and I was like, just mm-hmm. this, I feel like I'm closer to learning so much that I didn't know existed and seeing how it all works. And that's really a blessing to people who wouldn't normally get to know those things or see those things. Oh, cool. What, cool. How has, if at all, how has the conditions of the water and uh, just the caves changed during the course of your mm. career? Have they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There have been a lot of changes, and it concerns me. When I look at, for instance, the Florida Springs, for a part of my life, I moved to Florida because I was so attracted by the incredible clear water that was like spilling out of the earth. But now the flow of that water has decreased because we've withdrawn so much of it for the uses of humanity. And and the quality, like it's, it's gone from this turquoise blue to green Mm. and so the water quality is changing and when I go to the Arctic I see literally the extinction of the ice shelf you know and and ice cover imminent and every season that I go back I I realize that every iceberg that I look at is an endangered species as much as the Mm. withering polar bears and declining you know populations of whales and other animals so in, in my lifetime, there have been tremendous changes. It's, it's happening very fast. Do you feel like people are starting to see it more or do you think we're still in denial? Uh, well, I think awareness is growing. I have to believe that because I, I am an eternal optimist. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I hope that's one of the things that people will, will take away from reading the book too, is to get a better sense of this natural world that we all want to protect. Um, so yeah, I have to have hope. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to give up. <laughs> right. I do think yeah. people are learning, but I do, there, mm. there's a feeling of what can we do? Like it feels too big mm. almost um, for well, regular people. That's an interesting yeah, I, all problems are big. I mean, when I'm trapped in an underwater cave <laughs> and the silt has like fallen off the ceiling and and completely obliterated the visibility and there's a person, my scientific partner in front of me who is entangled in the guideline, breaks the guideline and is now stuck in an underwater cave. I mean, that's a big problem if I can't get us both out of this problem then two women are going to die in an underwater cave i mean it it doesn't get much bigger than yeah, that personally yeah. and problems whether it's something like that or whether it's global climate change are way too big to imagine the ultimate outcome but i believe that we all know the next best step to take towards a positive outcome and so whether that's you know me getting my partner and i out of the cave or whether it's me just making small choices and changes in my day-to-day life, all of those march us towards victory, Yeah, you know? So that's how I stay optimistic in solving all the problems. I'm yeah. wondering also how you stay up so positive when, for example, you were going on an expedition and for some reason there were people that were not happy about it and they sabotaged oh. like your lines and stuff and sent you terrible yeah. messages. And yeah. I don't know why, yeah. why did they do that? Uh, you know, people are funny. They all have their little territories and, and, you know, whether you're in a bowling league or a cave dive <laughs> community, people get jealous of other people's success or yeah. they feel like they're treading on each other's territories or whatever. And, and yeah, I was the victim of some pretty severe bullying as were my colleagues um, on a pretty remarkable project we worked on. It it got to the point where an individual actually mailed me body bags and, and told me to like clean up the cave when I was done kind of thing. And, you know, horrible 
threatening stuff that yeah. that apparently they thought was humorous. I don't. Oh, I don't really? Because that's imagine. really not funny. <laughs> no, I, I. I mean, I can't imagine why anyone would do that. But um, sometimes those things make me all that more stubborn and you know, <laughs> actually march me towards success. It's like, I'll show them. You're you know, so I good at like channeling all the negativity into positivity. I love that. Um, oh. <laughs> do you have a bucket list? <laughs> That's funny. My husband and I talk about this a lot. I mean, I don't really have a bucket list. Like I, I'm kind of doing what I love right, every day. Right. And we're really spontaneous. Like we don't plan a vacation. We just kind of at a very last minute might grab an airline ticket and go someplace without lodging or, oh my or God. any plans. And we just <laughs> we just kind of go. Um, so there's lots of places I'd still love to see on this planet, but I don't feel like like it's a bucket list in the sense that I have unfulfilled desires, mm-hmm. I guess. Right. I, I I'm just kind of doing it every, every yeah, day. Yeah, you, you're living your bucket yeah. list. Okay, we have yeah. and uh, part of one... that's because I've lost so many friends. Yeah, right. You know? Like I, life is immediate. You got to live it now. Yeah, right. I'm yeah. sure that that is one of the things that you've taken away from seeing all that loss mm-hmm. is yeah. it's now or never. That's right. Uh, do you? Mm-hmm. Oh well, we have one question that we ask everybody when they come on the show. Um, if mm-hmm. you have if you have a car, what do you keep in the trunk of your car? <laughs> That's great. It depends on whether I'm in Florida or in Ottawa. In Ottawa, it's a shovel. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. In in Florida, it's funny. I I I had a big like a plumber's truck kind of a van. So my van would be full of hundreds of pounds of like outdoor gear and cave diving equipment so that like if I found something interesting, I could just spontaneously go and explore. Yeah. It makes me tired just thinking about your life. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, good for you though. I'll live vicariously through you and your Instagram. Um, uh, Anyway, I know our listeners are going to love Into the Planet and is there anything else you want to share with them before you go? Oh, I would just say go out and explore. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. You even say awesome. in the book that everybody on earth is an explorer. Do you really believe that? Mm-hmm. I believe that. I mean, we're born explorers. Like, I mean, when we were all kids, we put everything in our mouth to <laughs> That's explore so true. and taste, including dirt from the yard. and. It's really in our, you know, as we grow up that it kind of gets beaten out of us. And yeah. I hope that everybody can like re-tap into that childlike uh, view of the world and uh, in that wonderment, find exploration and joy. Oh, I love that. You're such an inspiration. And now you're a writer too. You freaking do it all. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I just hope everyone loves the book and that you enjoy the process of sharing it with everyone. Oh, thank you so much. It's been great talking with you today. You too. Thanks for coming on the show. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.